strange thing compared to normal people. I didn't like to eat. I absolutely didn't like to eat. I didn't understand why people ate. I don't know where it came from, but it was the way it was for anybody. I'm 67 years old, and I've been gazing in the sun for a long time. It, I just became obsessed with the idea of finding out why we die. And so as I looked around, I noticed most of the people that actually had any knowledge about this type of thing always fasted. So I decided to try fasting and see what would happen. And sure enough, the first fast I did, which was about 10 days, I ended up having 10 times more energy. I happened to be living at the time on Muscle Beach in California where the bodybuilders work out. And I decided one day to go out and see if I could lift any weight. So I went out to the weightlifting pen. I started putting on the weights. And the first time I was out, I noticed as I put the plates on, the weights got lighter. So the very first time I walked into the weightlifting pen, I ended up with 800 pounds on the bar. At the time, we had Arnold Schwarzenegger, Mr. T, a lot of the other, you know, professional bodybuilders, and to them, I was sort of like a joke because I'm a little skinny guy lifting all that weight. But when I started lifting 1,100 pounds of weight, I started to get a little attention. Before I fasted, I couldn't lift probably 50 pounds. I never even tried to. So then I had a whole new uh, direction to look in because now I needed to find out why it is I lift, I eat less, and suddenly, without any other disciplines, I'm 10 times stronger. If we eat because we don't have enough energy. But what happens when you're in the sun, which is a natural energy for all living things, right? When you have enough sun, then the energy in the body rises to the point where you don't have an appetite, so there's no need to eat. That doesn't mean I have not been eating for 30 years. My purpose for eating is to lower my frequencies, not to increase it. It's almost like for me, it's necessary to not be too healthy because otherwise I wouldn't be able to go out and be anywhere. I might want to pull it a little more, maybe. We want to use the smaller 45s. Well, we're going to put a whole bunch on that. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're put but you want to put, well, I don't know about a thousand. Okay. No, no. Are you kidding well, we'll, we'll, we'll see what Let's we see what we can do. If I can lift the bar, I'm, I'll be happy. And I did lift the bar. <laughs> How many hours do you sleep a week, Wiley? Well, I sleep, I, I normally sleep one to seven hours a week. And I mean, some nights I sleep one hour, some nights I sleep a little more. What do you do with all that time? Well, that's the thing, just, I, don't know, I hate to admit it, but I get a little bored once in a while. No, you're not supposed to if you're spiritually enhanced. <laughs> Fasting is basically a belief system. I mean, whether one eats or not is a belief system, without a doubt. I discovered that is the belief system that controls our lives. For example, ask anybody, what do you think would happen if you don't have any food? Right off the bat, they say, I will die. But I never warm up, I never exercise, so I should just warm up a tiny bit. Just, oh man. Wanna go walk okay. the treadmill a little bit? I lifted 500 pounds of weight to demonstrate that the lifting of the weight basically has to do with the amount of energy that flows through the system. At my age, even, I can still lift, uh, you know, uh, at least five or 600 pounds. So that was the demonstration. And I also learned that I probably should exercise a little more. <laughs> if you're trained with this language and these beliefs, how can that be a prison? I'll just show you a little experiment with, uh, with some fleas, actually. Training fleas requires a glass jar with a lid. The fleas are placed inside the jar and the lid is then sealed. 
they are left undisturbed for three days. Then, when the jar is opened, the fleas will not jump out. In fact, the fleas will never jump higher than the level set by the lid. Their behaviour is now set for the rest of their lives. And, when these fleas reproduce, their offspring will automatically follow their example. Can you actually see the shape of the jar? There's no glass jar. They have been programmed to believe that jar is there and they can't jump past it. There's a curve at the bottom where they believe the jar is. Yes. But you say idiots, but we can be programmed in exactly the same way. Mm? No, but we, we are living in our own glass jar, yeah? Formed by our, our beliefs, yeah? Literally, right? Um, because, you know, our, our thoughts affect the way our bodies rea react, okay? So much so, has anybody heard of the Phantom Gym experiment? Um, I've actually tried it. I haven't tried it lately. I'm going to do it again. <laughs> but literally, if you, um, if you just took an hour a day and, you know, sat in a chair and imagined yourself at the gym doing a, wor a full workout, yeah, after about a month, you'll see your body has started, your body will have started to respond as if you've actually been to the gym. Because your body and your mind cannot tell the difference between imagined experience and a real one. For the, for the brain and the body, it, they're both the same. It has to be first person as well. They did an experiment with someone, um, you know, first person, so watching themselves do it, it didn't have the same effect. It didn't have the same effect. No, it has to be you, you know, imagining you actually going to the gym. What I did was, I, I remember I used to go to the gym every single day at one point, um, and sometimes twice a day, go to the same gym, sit in the same, um, you know, sort of same machines in a row, and I can remember every detail of it. So I just lay in bed, imagine my, you know, my usual routine, right, and I would say, um, do the first bit of the motion and imagine the rest of it, yeah? So I, I got the feeling that I was doing something, but then I would do the rest of it in my mind. And, uh, and yeah, after a month, I went to the, I was in the bathroom, I was like, whoa, hang on, whoa. <laughs> Hey, you know, because it, 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 it actually works. Um, in, in fact, three people can go into a gym. Three different blokes can go into a gym and use the same equipment, do the same number of reps, same exercises, and they'll have three different body types. The reason is one is a boxer, one's a swimmer, one's a, a gymnast because they expect their body to, to shape itself in a certain way for what they want. And it's that expectation that does it. It's not the actual weights. You see what I'm saying? Yeah? So, um, so yes, and it comes, the opposite is also true, the, the nocebo effect. Yeah, if, you believe, if you believe you're gonna die in three months, well, you better get your, orders, your affairs into order because your body's gonna find some way to make it happen. Literally, um, when they put these deadly uh, um, warnings on, on cigarette packets, c you know, cigarette smoking um, deaths or related deaths spiked because of those deadly warnings, okay? Um, yeah. Also, we have an effect on the world around us just with our um, words and intentions. So has any, everybody come across the Emoto Rice experiment? So essentially, you get, you get three bottle uh, containers, you boil up some rice, right, and you put the rice into these three containers, yeah, all sterilized, and you write on, on each one, you know, one of them you put, I love you, yeah, next one, I hate you, and then ignore on the other one. And then for the next couple of months, you, every day, you go to those three bottles, and you go to the one, uh, one of them and go, oh, I really love you, you're such beautiful rice. Oh, I really want to eat your lovely, delicious looking rice. Then you go to the next one, oh, I hate you, yeah, horrible, yeah, yeah. And you just ignore the last one, yeah. And after a while, you'll notice the uh, I love you rice stays white and, and fluffy and, and nice. The, um, 
you know, I hate you, Rice, goes all horrible. But the worst of all is ignore. Yeah? There's, yes. Your attention is the most important part of this. And this is what we do to our children. Yeah? You know, we affect them because oh, we just stick them in front of the TV or give them an iPad or something. Let us review. So we feel a tension within our body. Uh, we create a, a sense of lack within ourselves. We say we aren't something or we don't have something. Because again, every time you want something, you should replace the word want with lack. So you say you want something, you create a false need, which creates a, fa which creates a false pressure, which creates a, a false crystallization or a false stone. Because you got to look at yourself again, like the body as being similar to a diamond. Like it is carbon, it's compressed carbon or compressed light. It's, 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 a, it's a diamond or a stone, a crystallized, it's crystallized blood pretty much, pr crystallized light. So you got to look at it like that. You got to look at the body as it is light that has crystallized or spirit that has become in slower moving form and we call it a body. So you take that, that body, that, that crystal, that light, and you start to create lack and you start to focus on lack and you become a lackluster. So then you, once you create the lack and say, hey, I'm, I'm not, I'm not heavy enough or I'm too skinny or whatever, whatever the case may be, whatever you say lack is. So then you gain weight. So you eat your emotions because again, mental and emotional baggage becomes physical baggage. So you take that mental and emotional baggage and you, it becomes weight. Now to work the weight off or mold it or to shape it in a way you go through uh, self-induced fevers, which you call exercising or exorcism. That's what exercising is. You're growing through a self-induced fever and the fever heats up your energy, moves the lymphatic system and burns off the toxins. And as you exercise, you're, you become more of the beast. You get more in touch with the beast and you get more in touch with why you have developed this blockage or this, this thing that you constantly put in your body that keeps you in this compensation game because you're eating to have fuel to have work so you can go to work so that you can have money from work so that you can have more money for food so that you can have energy for work when you are energy itself you have to know that you know that atoms don't eat themselves they don't eat anything and we're made up of atoms and if you observe subatomic phenomenon the observer depending on the observer it, it, it you get a different you get a different result because you're observing yourself always so you're constantly a snake eating its own tail if you're in this exorcism uh, compensation game where you're constantly trying to recover, which is instead of heal. Most people are trying to recover and, and cover things up instead of healing and suppress and take, you know, as you take on more water weight, because water is emotion, metaphysically, the more you take on emotion, you know, stale, stagnant emotion, the more water weight you have, the more you swell because swelling is an injury. Or if you work out, you're constantly trying to compete, you know, combat that swelling process and direct the swelling. Now you're trying to just keep the swelling in your muscles, but it's still an injury. It's still a compensation. It's still you exercising and going through in self-induced fevers to compensate something, to stay comfortable. You know, comfort, it killed the cat. That's what we must know. R-O-Y-A-L-T-512 at yahoo.com. You don't need anything. You don't need anything. You never needed anything. The media is all lies. That's all they have left. They have nothing left. There is, there's no nukes. There's nothing that can kill you. If you can get yourself killed, you can get yourself born. There is, they have nothing left but the media. You have no needs. You only have wants, and wanting is unlimited. So the more you want, the more you lack. That's it. That's really all that anyone really needs to know. And you can't want what you have. So people are more thrilled with the chase than actually getting what they want that's just that's just the reality of law of attraction so that's just simple 